So in the studio today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Logitech G915 TKL wireless keyboard. Now this is a fantastic looking wireless low profile mechanical keyboard that comes in either black or white, TKL or full size. Now I've been personally using the Red G Pro Superlight for the last few months. I've been loving that mouse so much that I decided I wanted to get the keyboard to go along with it. And this is the perfect match for it. So we're gonna take a look and see what it's like. So opening the box, we treat straight away to the keyboard itself, wrapped in some cellophane. So there she is. You can see it's the TKL layout, but it is incredibly low profile. Feels amazing. So it's like a brushed aluminium top. You can see obviously the exposed low profile keycaps. This is the tactile version. But what I liked about this model, as well as being low profile and very compact, you've actually got a volume wheel on there and it's something that I do use so often. So there's a volume wheel here and a play, pause, mute and fast forward rewind button, really handy. You'll notice we've also got some other buttons over the other side for your backlights, a gamer mode, uh, Bluetooth, so you can either be hyperspeed or Bluetooth or your hyperspeed dongle. You could also run this wired if you wanted to, but then you're defeating some of the cost of this wireless keyboard. Now underneath that, we have a USB to USB micro cable, and we have the little hyperspeed dongle. We've got a little block here, so if you're sitting on your desk and you want this closer, you can just plug in the extra charging cable into this little block, and that'll keep it on your desk rather than have it flailing around with just the dongle. But obviously if you're using it on a laptop, you want to just pull this out and plug it directly into your laptop. That depends on how you want to use it. Underneath that, we do have a quick start guide, the Logitech logo sticker, a safety guide and regulations, all that rubbish, and that is it. Right, so let's take a quick look around the keyboard. We're going to start with the bottom. You can see we've got two stage adjustable feet, so you can adjust the typing angle for your needs. So obviously you can have it flat on the desk, or full height for that better incline. And then obviously then there's the in-between height, which raise up just a little bit. Obviously you're probably not gonna need a palm rest or wrist rest for the keyboard like this, because it is so low profile. And underneath you can see we've got the grippy feet that keeps it on your desk. And lastly, you'll see that there's a little slot there that you can place your dongle in to keep it safe. That's really handy, because you do not want to lose this little dongle. So as we move to the top, you can see we have the micro USB charging port and we have the little power button. So if I flick that on, you see there's a little blue instead of the red, and now my keys light up. Okay, so we're gonna just quickly plug this in now to my PC, install the software, I'm gonna come back, take a look at all of its features and give it a test. Right, so we're now up and running. I've installed the Logitech G Hub software on my laptop. I have the dongle already in there for my mouse. I've just put the dongle in for the actual keyboard itself at the back of the machine. And we're gonna now take a quick look at the software. Now straight away it's loaded up and you can see my G Pro mouse and the keyboard are showing up, which is really nice, so I don't have to worry about adding anything to it, it automatically picks it up. I just wanna quickly show you, we have got 58% battery left, and that's out of the box, haven't charged it yet. Uh, it's nice that it tells you straight away on the front screen. And it's also telling us that we're connected via the light speed, which is this button here, and that's the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. You could click it to the Bluetooth and connect it via Bluetooth if you wished. Obviously, if you're gaming, you're gonna to wanna to be either through a cable or on the light speed. Right, let's click on the actual keyboard itself. And here, you obviously see the keyboard larger on the screen so we can actually adjust certain features. On the left-hand side, we're set to 5,000 milliseconds for the rate, and the brightness is set to 100%. So obviously, if you wanna save battery, you can turn it off or just turn it down. But I'm in the studio with the studio lights, so I wanna keep it on 100%. Out of the box, it comes with a cycle effect, so it cycles through the sort of the primary colors. I'm just gonna quickly change this. Let's have a look at color wave. And instantly you can see now, we're getting some nicer effects on this keyboard. So if you wanna show it off, there's plenty of options to do in here. So we've got ripple, breathing, starlight, screen sampler. Oh, okay. So you can pick some colors up your screen and it'll put them on the keyboard. And an audio visualizer, so if you're playing some music, it will obviously go along with that and you can choose the colors on this actual screen here. But I'm gonna go straight back to Colorway because I like the look of that one. Now there are, as well, they've got Freestyle uh, where you can actually select different keys and set them yourself. 
So if you want a particular color scheme, you can design all that within here. Now below the actual light sync, we've also got assignments. And from within here, we can set the default functions within the keyboard. So you can actually assign some macros yourself. At the moment, you can see we're set here to the F keys along the top, those could be changed. So you've got a load of commands that you can just default to, or you can create your own macros or just put a different key press in. This can be very handy so you can set your F keys to load up different programs or set up a Discord message, whatever you want. Assign it in here and it'll stick to the keyboard. And then at the bottom there, we've got game mode. And in game mode, if you press the game mode button here, you can do certain things like disable the actual Windows key, uh, disable the alt tab and other bits and pieces you can't accidentally come out of the game. You can choose those within these options here. I personally never use this feature, but I think it can be quite useful. So now back to the actual keyboard itself. Now we've looked at the software. First, I want to just talk about things like the caps lock. If you press the caps lock, we've got a little light at the top that shows you the caps lock's enabled. You can see, as I mentioned, we've got the multimedia keys just above the keyboard here. They are lit up, which is nice. But unfortunately, these keys along the top of kind of a rubber, the rubber dome. This is a mechanical keyboard, and then to have rubber dome switches, it just feels a little bit odd. So they work, but I personally would have preferred mechanical keyboards in line with the rest of the keys. The volume wheel, on the other hand, that is fantastic. I don't know if you can see the volume is zooming up and down. It glides effortlessly. It feels really good to the touch. And there's no mucking around. It, you know, it glides as you press it. I've had plenty of other of these wheels where they either don't scroll well as you roll them, or they get stuck, or they go too fast. This feels fantastic. Obviously, we've got the mute key, which is handy as well, so you can just mute your volume. And over on this side, we've obviously got this little brightness symbol. Now, this here can adjust the brightness of the keyboard through a few different stages and also turn it off. That's really handy if you don't want to go in and actually change the brightness on the slider on the actual software. And then lastly, we've got just a little G logo lit up on the top left corner so that you know you've got a Logitech G series. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, as we unbox the keyboard, this is a low profile mechanical keyboard. And as such, you really don't need a palm rest like you do with the chunkier mechanical keyboards, which is why they don't supply one in the box. And there's no problems just resting your hands on here. It feels great. I've got the maximum incline set up and typing feels very good. The keystroke is definitely more shallow than a full-size mechanical keyboard, as you'd expect, being a low profile. Obviously, I've had to shrink everything down, but it's still got a decent press. It feels a million times better than a membrane or a laptop keyboard. This is the tactile. They also do a linear. The tactile is more like a brown switch. It's a very light tactile feel with a great pressure. So typing feels great on this. No problems at all. And obviously, being TKL, nice and short so if you're gaming I think this is a great size so you've obviously got your mouse a lot closer to your actual keyboard with a full-size keyboard with that number pad you're right over here I think most gamers do prefer a much narrower keyboard I mean, most people go down right the way down to a 60% but as you go down past the TKL you are losing functionality on the keyboard I like the TKL because you still get dedicated cursor keys that are separated from the keyboard this keyboard layout personally is my favorite style for an everyday keyboard and just lastly, before we sign off, I want to talk about the noise of this keyboard. As I said, this is the tactile keys. And if you're used to mechanical keyboards and maybe a blue switch, you know how noisy they can be as they clack around as you're typing. This, you can certainly feel and hear that it's a mechanical keyboard, but it's not overly loud. It isn't going to bother anybody next to you, but you certainly, you can certainly hear the tactile keys being pressed, but it certainly doesn't clatter like a Cherry MX Blue, as an example. Well, that's my brief first look and review of the Logitech G915 TKL. I think this is a fantastic keyboard. I'm looking forward to using this in anger with my Legion here and my G Pro mouse in this beautiful red color. And if you've got any questions, put it in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer you. And as always, thanks for watching.